Hey, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another edition of Lisa Renee TV. Now, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe today before you leave and make sure to thumbs up the video if you like what you see and to share, share, share on all your social media networking sites that you happen to be on at this time. All right, so let's get into today's video and happy Wednesday to everyone. And I hope everybody had a beautiful Valentine's Day as well. So happy belated Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> yes, love is in the air. <laughs> okay, so today I have a bit of an interesting topic. It's actually based on a dream I had last night. So I t I'll tell you the dream. Um, so in this dream, I was um, in my room and it was like maybe like I guess early evening, maybe five something, maybe yeah, four o'clock five. And I was listening to music in my room, which I do, you know, in real life. And so I listen to my music. I'm just, you know, my, my brother and my mom were downstairs. And I think my mom would come upstairs to her room, and I was just kind of relaxing in my room. And all of a sudden, I'm, I see this, like, flashes of light outside my room windows. And I'm like, what the heck is going on out there? And so all of a sudden, I realized what they were. I heard loud booming. And it ain't the 4th of July, so it wasn't no firecrackers. So <clears throat> I guess you know what that meant. It was gunshots. And I'm like, where are these gunshots coming from? But it was like, it was so weird because instead of just hearing like a few and then they stopped, I heard like several rounds of gunshots, you know, and they happened like a few minutes after one another. And I'm like, you know, it's like a series of shots and then a few minutes later again. And it was like a constant barrage of it. And I just understand what's going on. I, I'm getting on the floor because I don't want to come to my window. It was just really weird. So... Um, I go outside my room to see if my mom's okay, and I'm like, Mom, they're shooting, and I, I go downstairs to see if my brother's okay, and he was like, um, he wasn't in the basement where he usually is at, he was like in the living room, and he was watching TV, and we both had, you know, come to the conclusion that, okay, they were shooting, and so I'm like, what is that? So I'm looking around, he's looking outside, I'm like, Dave, get away from the window, you know, just in case something flies through, and... It was weird because I happened to look outside, and it's like I see all these, uh, this whole group of people. It's almost like, a, it looks like a whole block of people. It was so weird. You know, like all these people who I didn't know, you know, some of my neighbors and other people I really didn't know, they were like all out there, like, about to just set it off. Like, <laughs> seriously, like the people who were shooting, and then you had the other people who were just bystanders just getting there looking like, oh my God, what is going on here? They were there. Some police officers were there, and then, like, some people for, who worked for the CTA was there. That's the Chicago Transit Authority. I was like, what are they doing out here? <laughs> I'm like, they live over here or something? I know they ain't stopping nothing, <laughs> you know? So they were there. <laughs> and it's like, they, they were, it's a big crowd, like, standing in front of my house. And then in between, like, my neighbor who's on the right of me and my neighbor on the, le on the left of me. And it was just so weird. I'm like, why are they all out here in front of my house like this? First of all, they're too close for comfort. You know, I'm like, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. So I'm trying to call 911. And um, I go back upstairs. And my mom was like, go down there. And uh, somebody rings the doorbell. Yeah, somebody rang the doorbell. And I'm like, who is ringing our doorbell? And my mom was like, go down there and see who at the door. I'm like, no. <laughs> It's some crazy people. It's foolery going on outside. I ain't going out there to see what I don't care what to do. They better not be trying to come through. So I came, I came downstairs anyway because she asked me to see who at the door. So I look outside. It was like some lady. She looked like a detective, but I'm not sure. And so she was, you know, we hadn't came to the door fast. So she rang the doorbell. She walked up the steps, up the steps, and then she just went on back out the fence. I saw her closing our gate, and she went on back out to the crowd. I'm like, what does she want? <laughs> and so I went back upstairs. I'm like, it was just some lady. I mean, I don't know who that is. So I look outside the bathroom window and I see our other neighbors across the um, way, across the alley. Um, and they were like kind of partying. But it was weird because our neighbors across the street, who actually live across the street, they were out there. I'm like, I ain't never seen them before. They don't, I don't think they even know them. <laughs> you know, like we speak to them in real life, but I'm like, I don't think they uh, really know them, excuse me. And. It was just so crazy because I see them across the alleyway 
And they're kind of like partying or whatever. They drinking, having a good time, you know. And, you know, listening to their music. And I'm like, what are they doing? Like, do they have any idea what's going on, you know, out front? So it was just really bizarre. So I come um, <clears throat> back downstairs and I just decide that I've had enough. I'm sick of this. So I open the door. I go out. Go outside. And by this time, it's like it has lightened up a little bit. Like, the time has come really fast. And I just go outside. I'm like, look. Look. All of you, look. You know what? You know what we're going to do? We're going to talk, okay? All of y'all. We're going to talk. I'm going to meet up with you. You're going to meet up with me. I'm going to meet up with you. You're going to meet up with me. <laughs> okay. I just seriously, like, took a stand. I was like, I guess they look like, who is this lady? But they in front of my house. And I was, like, really pissed off about it. I'm like, no, no, no. You you cause a ruckus the whole night. You upset me, my mom, my brother. You upset everybody in the neighborhood. You've been shooting. It's really annoying. So I just came outside. I was like, look, no. We're going to talk. Okay. We're going to talk. So I decided that we're going to do a neighborhood meeting. And we're just going to talk it out and figure out what the issue is. Like, why is there all this shooting and what's going on? And um, uh, we decided the meeting place would be the church. So there was, like, this big church. Um, it was, like, this beauty. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful, immaculate kind of cathedral. And we all ended up at the church. So all of them agreed. It was like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I couldn't believe it was that easy. It was like, mm -hmm, okay. You know, so we all ended up at the church. And um, I was helping the pastor out. I was helping him pass out fruit. We were passing out apples. And so um, everybody was just coming in in droves. They were coming into church. And this lady asked me, um, she said, can, you, can I have an apple, please? I was like, yeah, sure. He gave me an apple for me, but I gave an apple to her. I just wanted everybody. I wasn't concerned about me having an apple. I just said, I want everybody else to make sure they have fruit. You know, so I'm passing out fruit. Everybody's getting in, getting comfortable. And we get ready to talk it out. <laughs> like we're gonna find out what's going on but it was funny because it was so weird i saw some people in the church and i like they was arm wrestling or doing something but then all of a sudden they're like oh so nice to see you they hugging i was like what kind of rough hug was that they scared us me in the past was looking like are they getting ready to shoot up in there too no nah, well, apparently they were hugging it was like two women who knew each other but the way they was hugging was rough I, I thought they was getting ready to fight you know it was scary. But anyway, it had been a long night. <laughs> so, yeah, but it was beautiful. And But the peace and the calm didn't come until the morning. And when the sun came up and everybody was at the church and everything, and, you know, we were ready to talk it out. So I woke up, and I was uh, kind of thinking about that dream. And it was interesting, and I was like, God, like, you know, you trying to tell me something with that dream? And it, it hit my spirit, like, okay, wow, I do think... That was such a message, you know, for, like, what's going on. Because there's a lot of violence going on in my city, in Chicago. It's so much stuff that's going on, like, every week. And it's kind of sickening. And people are getting tired of turn, turning on the news. Because nobody wants to see what's, what's happened to this baby, that baby, them babies, and, and these, these people. And this, it's just a lot of goofiness. And you're like, what the, you know, what's going on? And so, I, you know, want to pose a question here. A couple of questions. So, Whose responsibility is it to heal the broken people of this sick world? That's kind of heavy, right? To put that on your shoulders, you know? Whose responsibility is it? And then as a Christian, if you are a Christian, is it truly our responsibility to get hurting, broken, lost people back to God's graces, back to the church, which serves as a safe haven, a uh, refuge from a satanic world? So those are two heavy questions that you kind of want to think about as a Christian. Like, okay, is it my responsibility to help people? You know, I mean, what what is my responsibility as a Christian? You know, I think a lot of times we as Christians, you know, when it comes to ourselves, like our own Christ walk, our own life in general, and then also in the church, um, not and this is not for all Christians. I'm not, I'm not talking to all Christians. I'm saying a lot of us. We are so focused on our own like journey and and, and our own selves and like self serving instead of like, but and, and then also like asking God for like only personal blessings like we only ask Him for, you know, oh God give me this to me and it's okay you know and He wants to bless you of course don't feel bad about that of course you know you know I'm hey you know <laughs> you know hey I'm always like hey you know yeah I need this Lord I really would like this it's perfectly fine but what are you willing to do? Like, I mean, are you trying, because the, really, um, the biggest trait of Christ 
you know, the biggest, um, you know, signifier that you are a Christian or that you really are walking this Christ walk out, you know, um, the biggest trait that you can have that's similar to your father is servitude. You know, when Jesus came here, you know, he came here to be a servant. He became a servant. So he especially do the same, you know, so, and, and we all serve in different ways. You know, you don't have to serve in the, in the same way. You know, it, it could be totally, two totally different ways. Like you may go to a homeless shelter every weekend. I may go visit the elderly. You know, every weekend. Like, I mean, it, it's different ways that you can serve. I mean, work with children or something. Like, I mean, it, it's different ways that you can serve. So, you know, I think a lot of us get so caught up in what am I getting, me, my, oh, my, and, and, and us, you know, instead of thinking, like, well, what can I do for them? You know, we don't really think like that. I think because, like, society trains you to think the opposite way of, like, what Christ wants you to do. Because, I think sometimes we do live in an anti-Christ society. I mean, if you really think about it, you think that this this society is really all that Christ-centered. And I think now it's becoming, it's turning back around. But I, I think it hasn't been all that, you know, big on what Christ wants us to do. It's, it's all about, what do you want to do? What would you like? What do you want to get? You know? <laughs> and so you're like, ah, I want everything. Ah, you know? And so you don't really think about, like, you know, what, what, what you can do for other people. You're like, damn, other people. I'm thinking about me. You know? So that's been, like, the mindset that's kind of been placed into our heads. I think we have to kind of eradicate that. And Christ can help you eradicate that type of thought process, that type of, that type of thinking, you know? I think that society tells you the more you give to other people, the less you have for yourself. And the, and the more unhappy you'll be when that's really false you know actually it's the opposite the more you give the happier that, that you you are and they do say it's better to give than to receive and and i never i think when i was younger i didn't understand what that meant until so i became a grown woman and i began to live that life of servitude and i saw what it was you know to be this this servant and i'm like this is really beautiful you know because it's not it's not serving to a point where you are a doormat like christ was never a doormat he don't want you to be one either but you know, it's really beautiful to just see somebody else smile, help somebody else out who's not doing so good, you know, to try to make somebody else, um, make somebody else's life a little bit easier, just put a little light, you know, uh, in, in their midst of darkness. And so that's what really being a servant is, you know, serving uh, a servant of Christ and, and helping his people out. That's what it really is being a Christian, you know. But a lot of people don't really want to do that, it's especially with churches. A lot of churches today, they may talk about it, but they ain't walking it. Some churches do. A lot of churches out here are doing it. They out there in the community trying to get people. To, now, we talk about Jehovah's Witnesses all the time, but Jehovah's Witnesses, you can learn from them because they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, they ring your doorbell, get on your nerves, but then guess what? <laughs> they're out there trying to do community outreach. That's what they're supposed to be doing. Other religions do it, too. You know, I had a guy who was like, I think it was Buddhism or whatever, but he gave me a free pamphlet. He, I think I could have donated. He, I was like, well, I don't have no money. He was like, that's okay. I'll give it to you free. But he was doing what he was supposed to be doing. He's out here, you know, letting people know about what he, you know, uh, believe in or whatever. And he's trying to, you know, just help people out or whatever, you know, trying to uh, encourage people. But he's doing he's what we're doing. So you can take a lesson from people. You talk, We talk about them all the time. And they probably, they probably don't, they don't bother them because they know they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. So you can take a lesson from them as a Christian. As a Christian, you don't see, how many times you see Christians out here like that? Sometimes you see them, but a lot of times we don't, we don't I, I just feel like we're not doing, as a church, we're not really doing what we're supposed to be doing, you know, as far as community outreach. There are some, there are a lot of Christian churches that are doing community outreach. I know a pastor personally who does community outreach all the time. He had, every time me and my mama drive by, he's in, um, yeah, he's in an area not far from me. But every time we drive by, I see people lined up by his door. He giving out clothes. He giving out food. He's doing stuff. He, this guy does it all the time. So God bless the man. He's a really nice guy, you know. But, you know, you all have to, we got to get on it. You know, we got as Christians, you have to you got to step it up a little bit. I think God would love to see us step it up. He would like to see more people. He's only one person, so we need more churches that are going to not just talk it out, talk about it, but be about it. You got to, you know, get out there and say, yeah, we're going to do this community outreach. We're going to get out to broken, hurt people. We're going to go out there and talk to them instead of kind of waiting for them to walk through the door. You know, sometimes they walk through. But I think sometimes you got to go out there and show them that you do care about them instead of kind of building up this kind of like, I guess, 
um, like a line, you know, where you like, this is the line, this is our church, we're up in this building, this is our place, our building, y'all stay out, don't come in, and that's what they feel like, so they feel rejected already, you know, the way y'all, some of y'all walk, you know, you got your hi hat on, and your fur coat, and you're like, mm. And they're like, oh, <laughs> they're like, I'm not going over there, you know, because she's in there, you know. I know when I walk in, she's going to look at me and roll her eyes. I mean, I sit down on the pew next to her. And why? Do you think that's really a real Christian? Why would you do that? You know, because you feel you better than her or you better than him, you know. So sometimes we get that status and God bless us so much that you started feeling your blessings a little too much. You started, you started to get where you came from. You start feeling so good that you feel better than other people. So you look down on people, you know, they haven't really been, you know, they haven't walked into their inheritance yet. They haven't came up yet. They kind of have, they had a low point in life. And you're looking down on them instead of trying to see what you can do to help them. You know, and this is crazy, but, you know, you got to ask yourself, is it, as a Christian, is it truly our responsibility to get hurt and broken people, lost people back to God's grace? I think so. <laughs> I think it is. You know, a lot of times as churches, churches, um, they they think more so on a, um, I guess on, you know, an internal sort of community outreach and internal gratification or edification, meaning we're going to build up ourselves. <laughs> you know, like, oh, let's build ourselves up, you know. And, and you do have to build yourself up as a church to get strong before you can help other people understand that. But I was talking about they only do it, they only build themselves up. And it's a lot of churches like that. Some of y'all go to them, you know. <laughs> but you only, you know you only build yourself up. We're all about, hey, y'all, let's have a church picnic. Hey, y'all, we're going to have a fashion show. Hey, y'all, we're going to have a dinner for the pastor. Like, and y'all all about building yourself up and getting stronger as a church. But then who is it serving? You got you got a hurt, a hurt broken community out there. There's a lot of violence, a lot of craziness, you know. But y'all don't care about them. Y'all like them. What's all about us? You know, we look good. We blessed and highly favored. We out here. We got all kind of furs and diamonds and all kind of nice cars because God has been good to us. And these old slum bums out here, they ain't about nothing anyway. And it's like. You know, I mean, for you to be that way, you think God is really pleased with that kind of behavior. And I'm not coming on here to beat nobody up. But I'm just saying, this is just something to think about. Like, I don't think it really is supposed to, <laughs> it's supposed to go that way. Because you got to think, yes, I have all these diamonds. And yes, feel good about that. I, yeah, feel good about your blessings. It's okay to feel good about that. I know I feel good about mine. But, you know, it's really about giving back. You know, it's not always about... I've obtained all these things, and I'm sitting on it, and I'm not sharing. I'm not giving to anybody, you know. So, you know, it's just something something to think about. Now, our police superintendent of Chicago, Eddie Johnson, he says he wants stronger sentencing for gun crimes, according to ChicagoTribune.com. This is a quote um, from CBSLocal.com that he left. A uh, majority of officers out there that work every day are trying to do their job correctly and professionally. Now, the ones that do not, that is my challenge to get rid of them. Do we have those types of officers? Yes. Is there racism? Yes. But we cannot fix that until we start to acknowledge it. And that's from his uh, interview. He had like an interview press conference at uh, Clara Barton Elementary School, which is located in Auburn, Gresham neighborhood. So I thought that was good. I thought I think Eddie Johnson is doing pretty good. You can tell he kind of has a good heart. I would say so. You know, <laughs> yeah. I think our, all of our past police superintendents have been good. You know, good men with good hearts. For the most part, I haven't seen anybody who's like been crooked. But I think Eddie Johnson is is doing pretty well. Now he passed out. He fainted not too long ago, and he's doing great now. But he he passed out. I think he passed out from stress because it's killing him. Like on the inside, this man probably don't get off sleep at night because he goes home thinking about it, who gonna get shot next, what baby gonna die next, what woman, what man gonna die next. Because it's, it's it's a lot. Of, I mean, that's a hard job to be a police superintendent. You gotta worry about you know old. You got communities complaining about racism and and, and police brutality, and you got babies dying. It's like oh my god. I couldn't have his job. <laughs> I know that a lot of us couldn't do his job. It's very hard. You know, he like I feel, he probably feel like I can he can barely do his job some days because it just it drives you nuts. So he passed out. You know, it was had a press conference. He passed out because it just I like oh my god, poor man. I'm so glad he was okay, but I think it's just it's a lot of stress. You know, on him, and uh, he probably needs to take a vacation soon. Cause, but it's hard because it's, it's crime happening every time he did. If he take a vacation. The whole, the whole city just blow up. You know, it's blowing them now. Why he, why he there in the office? So, 
you know, it, it's just it's just craziness. But a lot of times, as far as the violence problem we have in Chicago, or, or any any cities, a lot of cities that have violence problems, Chicago's not the only one. We have to stop only depending on the you know police to help. I think a lot of times black community does that too. They only they put it all on the community, the police. Oh, the police needs to do this, that, third. Police are only doing. They can only do so much. It's really you as a community, just like in my dream. What did I do? I took initiative. I walked outside my porch. I said, excuse me, you. We, I'm going to meet with you. I'm going to meet with you. We're going to the church. You know, and they all, like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and they took their bus to the church and we, uh, we passed out apples and we talked, you know. So that's what we need to do, you know, whether we pass out apples or whatever, <laughs> you know. <laughs> apples or no apples, we're going to talk, you know. What you have to do as a community, you have to come together as a community and say, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about the issue. With the, You have the police president. You have the pastors, the bishops, the evangelists present. You have the, the church president. You meet at the church. You know, bring the people back to the church. I think that's what we're losing out. Bring, and you have the whole community present too. So it's three entities working together, and you know, it's going to be more powerful than if you say, "I'm going to put all the hurt and the pain and the guilt on the police only." And they may be part of the problem, but I, I think blaming them solely is not going to solve your problem. I don't personally. You know, you talk about me all you want to. I'm, <laughs> I was going to say like blaming them solely because I think it's it's not it's not all them. It has to be all of us. It has to be. It has to be the whole community. It has to be the church community. You know, whether it be Catholics, church. Uh, you know, plus, you know, the Christians, whatever. You know, it, it just needs to be the church involvement. You know, um, period. I do want to see more Christians more active in the community. I do want to see you all doing more community outreach. Speaking of, of which, and I'm gonna um, end this very soon. Um, I was actually. Um, Rolling through, I was on the King on the Three King Drive bus like not too long ago. I went um, to the auto show. Um, yeah, last week I went to the auto show, with my boo, and uh, <laughs> we had a great time. But I was rolling through on the King Drive bus, and I was like maybe on sixty something, like near Washington Park. So if you roll through, I saw on the fence it said hashtag Respect Life, and somebody I think it was like little white balls, or it was like a little white design. It was really beautiful. And I saw like a lady walking her dog and some somebody, some parents playing with their kids over there. But it looked like a picture of life. I was like, wow. It looked so like heavenly, like God was there, you know. And I think whoever did that was genius. I like to find the person who did it to interview them about like what was behind your you know, your idea of doing it. I think it was it was cool. You know, but I think a lot of people have they look at certain communities and they forget that there's life in those communities. You know, that God resides in those communities as well. You know, that God can change those communities as well. And a lot of times people look at, at communities like that. They look at the people and they forget them that they, you know, there are residents there who live, who live there for years, who want to move there. You know, they want to feel safe. They want to feel like somebody cares about them. So we have to, we got we to do something. We have to um, push life and love back into those dark, barren places. That's what it's going to take. So if it takes getting the community to the church and passing our apples, then you got to do what you got to do, you know, because you got to, we got to have a meeting. We got to talk to each other and all this violence and stuff, all this devilment, it don't have to win, but it will continue to win if you let it. If you keep sitting down as a community, you keep, well, somebody else got shot this week. Aren't you, talk, aren't you tired of talking about that? Okay, so do something about it. You as a community, you come together. It has to be more than the old folks. A lot of times, old folks will get up and do it. Old folks will get up and come out. But I'm talking about young people need to be more fired up. And there are young, more young people, more millennials and everybody. You know, more young people, more people my age, they're, they're more fired up now. You know, but seriously, it needs to be a change. I think us as a church have to definitely maybe spearhead it and, and come in and be more of a, a force in the community because we can do it I, I can see us doing that but we have to want to do it so yeah it's just something to think about but anyway before i leave you before i leave you i'm gonna read you a quick verse okay so luke 8 43 to 48 so when a woman having an issue of blood 12 years which has spent all of her life all of her living upon physicians neither could be healed of any she came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood staunched and jesus said who touched me when all denied peter and they that were with him mastered the multitude 
the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee and sayest thee, it sayest thou who touched me. And Jesus said, Somebody have touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. So, I chose that particular verse because I just felt it was a good example of how this woman, you know, she had that faith. And whether you, my pastor talked about it last week, whether you have very little faith, that of a mustard seed or smaller, or big faith, as long as it's in Jesus, then you're good. You are always in, in the right and you're going to be good. You know, and so this woman, she came upon him, you know, she touched him. She came to the church. Where did she find herself? She found Jesus. She had to find him somewhere. I'm not saying Jesus is only in church. No, Jesus is everywhere. You can find him on a, on a park stoop somewhere, or, or, on a bus stop, you know, in your closet. I mean, you can find him anywhere. But I'm just saying, you know, uh, I think, you know, the whole idea is really just getting people back to that church, that safe haven, you know, getting just getting back to God's house, period. That's what I feel. I feel it's just, it's just a great starting point, you know. And a lot of people, especially people who are broken and hurt, the first place they come, one of the first places they come is church. They find, they go to church to find Jesus. You know, usually they, they do. People who are out in the community, out they, they come in to the church. You know, that's where they find themselves on a pew somewhere. So, you know, let, let's, let's encourage them that it's okay to come in. All right, so that's all I have for you today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. It's long, but you know what? Hey, I had a word, so I had to be the one to deliver it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it encourages you to be proactive as a Christian, get out there and do some things, you know. So, yeah, go ahead and share the video, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And you guys have a blessed rest of your week, and I'll see you later. Bye.